I work at Regis Jesuit High School. I am a theology teacher and I also coach lacrosse. I went to Regis Jesuit High School. Yep. I graduated in 1998 when there was only the other building and all the boys were over there and there was no girls division. To leave my eighth grade year from my middle school, I was expelled, but they did it in kind of a nice way so that it wasn't as, as detrimental to my record. Um, and this is not at all where I wanted to be and I kind of came kicking and screaming. Um, but by my junior year, especially kind of with Kairos and then some of the theology teachers that I had and then my senior year, uh, there was a very influential theology teacher I had named uh, Father Bershek. Um, he was a Jesuit priest. Uh, and that kind of turned everything for me. So I'd say it probably wasn't until my senior year um, that I even considered going into education. Um, it probably wasn't until my junior year that I even considered going on to college. So um, I definitely attribute, you know, Regis with sort of turning things around for me. To connect with kids, I think, you know, it just comes across as authentic when I can share that, you know, I struggle with some of these same things and that, you know, in my attempts to be a good husband and a good father, um, I face you know, maybe a grown-up version of a lot of the same stuff that I think you guys face. Um, so yeah, that's always something that I'm happy to, to share about. Um, I love Belize. I mean, I, it, you know, it was the first place I ever taught. For me, Belize was really kind of a place where my faith took on a life of its own. I really needed God because things were so difficult there um, in a way that I'd never encountered before that it really deepened kind of my spiritual sense, my connection, my relationship with God and my my. Um, the importance I placed on the other relationships I fostered. I so Paradox is a, a stage name I took on um, kind of as a function of the things I was going through when I was younger. Uh, when I was in um, undergrad, when I was in Colorado State, I met a group of people that were already making hip-hop music. Um, and they were just friends of mine, and it was kind of a natural extension of my friendship with them that I would sort, sort of start to kind of dabble in it. Um, and I found it to be an awesome way to sort of process things. It was very cathartic. Uh, you know, it was cheaper than going to a therapist. Uh, so actually, when I was in Belize, um, it was one of the, the sort of main vehicles by which I um, worked through the things that I had to kind of work through there. And I actually recorded an entire album on a little cheap uh, four-track machine um, and then re-recorded it when I came back. It's never been really something that's at the forefront of my life, but it's always... Uh, something I know I can have recourse to if I need to process or, um, and especially as I teach and encounter new things in my teaching, I try to use it as a, as a way to address things that I see my students wrestling with, um, hopefully through a, a, a medium that's approachable. You know, hip hop is something that I think is more approachable than a lecture or um, potentially than like country music. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it's not a huge part of my life, but I mean, it's still, it's still enough that it's very life giving to me still. Um, you know, it requires kind of a balance because any time I spend on it is obviously time taken away from things that I do for the school or that I do for my wife or that I do for my kids. So it always, you know, it's always kind of a, a balancing act as to where it fits and, um, you know, when it's worthwhile to fit it in.